Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for joining this segment. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about do you have what it takes to be an exceptional RPA developer? I've been in the automation industry for 27 plus years. I think my claim to fame is my first robot was in the year 2000, one year before UiPath was invented or started out as a company. And I'm looking forward to walking and talking you through my thoughts on automation, RPA, and how to be an exceptional developer. So let's begin here. Let's see if we can see the start of the cover deck, Jane. Alrighty, so today I've, I've changed the title a little bit and said, what does it take to be an exceptional RPA developer? And I've been very deliberate about this. As someone once said to me, do you want to go to a, a very average cinema to watch a very average movie, to watch very average actors and eat very average popcorn in a very average seat? It's not something I want to do. So today I'm gonna to call out the skills and attributes and the attitude of a fantastic, exceptional RPA developer. He or she will be a unicorn in this industry, but why not aim for the top and let's see where we can get to. So let's begin. Let's pop a slide here and let's see where we're going to. So what I want to do is set a little bit of context first. So in, in the, the world of work these days, <clears throat> a new workplace is emerging. So in the past where these technologies, including RPA or automation toolkit, weren't available, what you found is that a large number of people entered the workforce and they ended up doing very uh, rote, very bespoke, very mundane roles. That isn't the case anymore. The world moves a little bit too fast. Technology is one of those things that is driving change tremendously. And now there is a great deal of powerful automation tooling and technology available that we hope, if you look to the right hand side of this picture, will transform the equation that a lot of organizations see, i.e. where 20% of people's time is actually adding value. And instead we move that to 80% of time is adding value. And RPA is one of those automation toolkits that allows you to implement in your organization to allow the mundane, the repetitive, the, the short cycle tasks that are necessary, but don't add tremendous value. You can get the, the robot to do that work instead of the human, freeing up the human or the person to do the pieces of the role that are truly valuable and truly worthy of their skill set, their emotional intelligence, their customer engagement skills, their insight, their thinking, their foresight, all the things that make us uniquely human and make us uniquely valuable. So let's see, what does it take to be an RPA developer, an exceptional developer to allow us to transform work into the future? Okay, let's, let's move through the first uh, set of 20 different RPA developer guru attributes. I want to begin with the very first one. And this is one that I think is, is absolutely key. Too often uh, folks join organizations and they believe they do marketing, they do finance, or they do coding. Uh, in reality, people may perform those activities, but that's not why an organization exists. So one of the first things that an exceptional RPA developer needs to recognize is that they are there to deliver tangible, profitable business outcomes. Now, different organizations have different strategies, different organizations want different things. I would argue that most want to make a profit to actually stay in business, invest and grow. And therefore an RPA developer, an exceptional one, understands not necessarily the coding and the tooling and the technology, that's absolutely vital. But one of the things they understand is that they're there to drive the organization forward. They're there to make sure the organization strategy is met. They're there to make sure that uh, she delivers um, good code that makes sure that the organization drives profit maybe drives colleague experience, which is absolutely key. Remember you design for people, not for robots. You will or should improve your customer journey as you are coding and delivering outcomes for the business. You may improve risk and compliance. You may drive real savings, but one thing is certain, keep your eye on what the organizational prize is at all times and make sure that the work that you are delivering is absolutely aligned to the business strategy. So that's number one, number two, and probably number three all put together in the same time. I highly recommend you keep focused on that. If you don't understand your organizational strategy and how you're able to contribute to that, please, please, please go and have a conversation with a manager or leader to understand what you need to do to make sure you're delivering on those outcomes. The next one you're seeing here, number two, is organized and willing to document. Too often you see great coders or good coders writing code the problem is that they may get hit by the lottery bus, they may leave the organization, or more often than not, they actually need to work in a team. And therefore the willingness to actually write down and codify what it is that they've built, how they're going to build it, what is the solution that they're intending to deliver, 
for their colleagues and themselves to pick up a later date is absolutely key. And that uh, ability to document, because trust me, there's a lot of documentation in RPA or in automation land that you will need to deliver is absolutely key in the ability to be able to communicate clearly in documentations to your colleagues, to your SME, to your business sponsor, to your manager, to your COE head is absolutely vital, something that should be practiced a great deal. Transparent and willing to share. There's a, a great phrase that says that great coders develop other great coders. Uh, the old uh, idea that you are most valuable in an organization because of what you know and everyone comes to you is a very outdated and outmoded process in my belief, in my head. I think brilliant or exceptional coders are willing to develop other coders. They're willing to share the knowledge they have. And that is hard fought, hard won knowledge that takes a great deal of time and learning and mistakes and energy to get right. And what I found throughout the years is the more we're willing to share, the more people are willing to share with us. So vital, vital skill is the willingness to share what you have done or developed, seek feedback, give feedback, share it with colleagues and recognize that we're all here to deliver the greater good, the bigger prize for the organization itself. So please, please share, share what you know. Uh, data and process analytical skills, absolutely key here. When you're running and redesigning processes using robotic process automation or other tooling and technology, one of the things you do is you document the process. At that point, that may be the first time in many, many years that a, a process has been documented. It may be the first time that automation has been applied to the process itself. And during that process design and during the running of the robot, you can start to generate uh, new and insightful data around the process itself. That may be the amount of transactions that go through a particular process or a particular cycle or organizational unit. It may be how long the process actually takes to happen and to deliver. And those themselves can give you some key points of pre and post automation benefit that you can leverage and measure. They can be your baselines. But also what you might discover is that there's data that is transferring through your code that could be exceptionally valuable to the organization. And when you take that data and you apply analytical insight on top of that, then you can display that data to the benefit of the organization. That might be, for example, if you're an insurance brokerage, how many insurance customers are ringing up, how many insurance uh, quotes are being delivered on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And that can allow you to do a whole host of things, particularly uh, maintain the right level of staffing and whatever else. Or again, as I said, once you've got data points in your, in your code, you can start to then say, okay, the process takes three minutes. How can I get that down to two minutes to drive customer satisfaction, drive more quotes through the system, drive more value, save time in the agents and the organization to allow them to spend more time with the customers. What you might discover is if you apply analytics or predictive and prescriptive analytics on top of that, or AI or machine learning, then you can really make powerful use out of the data inside of your organization and drive new incomes, new values, recognize new ways of working or provide new insight that the organization didn't possess before, but absolutely key. Scale thinking, I think is absolutely vital. I think it was Forrester who quoted that uh, more than half the world's organizations who have been implemented RPA have 10 robots or less. Now, again, please do not judge the success of your program on the number of robots you've got. If you have 50 or 100 robots, and they're all sitting pretty idle. It reminds me of an organization that is 50 or 100 people not doing a very great deal of work, not adding a great deal of benefit or not adding a great deal of profit to the bottom line, they're an expense. And therefore, if you're in the same situation with the number of robots, not doing a great deal, not earning you a lot of money, not saving you a lot of time, not driving a lot of incomes, then that is not a sign of success. You could have 10 robots that could deliver 25 million of value a year. That would be a true sign of success and goes back to point number one, it's all about the business outcomes that your code and your automation COE deliver that absolutely decides whether you win, lose, or draw in this game. But one of the things I would recommend is in automation world is do start small. Automation muscle needs built up over time, but do think big. Automation needs to be or should be a very strategic application that supports your business strategy. I believe in end-to-end -end automation of business processes and organizations where automation counts and matters so that you can drive incomes, you can drive better risk and compliance profiling, you can make happier colleagues who are free to do what they need to do, but scale fast. In other words, start small, learn, 
build automation muscle, have an end big, big prize in mind, and then scale and run hard with what you're doing. Now that involves a lot of different things, including building components and code in such a way that these Legos can be built together and reused time and time again. But don't treat automation as just a very tactical task-based solution. Think big, you can automate most, if not a lot of things these days, if not everything, using RPA and a tool set. Now, number six may be an obvious one here, but actual RPA experience. Over my time, I've met many, many, many paper-based certified RPA experts, and that there's nothing wrong with getting the qualification. I would absolutely recommend that. Put a bit of structure and organization and deliberate learning around your journey. But what I would recommend is get your hands on a tool, because once you have the tool, it's a bit like learning to drive a car. You may do the practice, you may do the theory, but the time to truly learn is getting your hands dirty, using the tool for, for anything and everything in your organization. There are a great many tools out there for a great many budgets, uh, so it doesn't mean that you have to pay a volume of money. There's a great number of tools that you can download for free, and UiPath happen to be one of those where you can practice and learn, and they've actually education and courses online as well, as well as other vendors. But just practice, find a process in your organization, find something that you do on a regular basis and get using a tool or ideally tools because all the time you learn differently. I learned how to drive in one car, but I truly learned how to drive by the time I've driven my fifth or sixth car. So there is our, our one to six signs and I will keep coming back to business outcomes every single time because no matter whether you document, share, discover new data value or whatever else, whether you decide that you are scale thinking or not, or whether you have actual RPA experience or not, the key determinant will be the value that you bring to your organization. So please, please, please always keep that as your North Star. Work out what the business does that makes money and make sure you design a program around that with your CFO blessing it to make sure you deliver on the business outcomes that are required through your excellent coding. Alrighty, that's one to six. Let's pop slides. So sign seven to 10 here of an exceptional developer. And again, I'm, I'm going beyond average here. So agile and project management skills, particularly focusing on the agile to deliver fast. This is one of the key attributes of RPA as a tool. Unlike coding languages, and by that I mean C Sharp and C plus or whatever else, RPA is very quick to implement. You can get a coder wrapped around it pretty quick. You can get what's colloquially known as a citizen developer up to speed pretty, pretty fast. The one thing is it brings a great deal of agility to an organization. So rather than waiting for months, you can start to deliver benefit to an organization within days or weeks or within very short cycle times when you put the tooling into the hands of individuals. And that's key in this digital age. This is a world where things have never gone faster and trust me, they will never go slower. And therefore those companies that can adopt and roll out technology and react to changing and very rapidly changing market situations are the companies that are going to win. And this is a tool that allows you to be very agile in your delivery and your benefit delivery to an organization. Curious, adaptable, and excited by change. So I would sort of say, if, if you're not excited by change and you're an emerging technology space, then there, there may be a, a little disconnect there. I think that in an emerging space where the technology is driving such dramatic change and the technology is changing itself, like who heard of RPA maybe 10 years ago, who heard of Internet of Things, who heard of blockchain five years ago. All these are fantastic technologies and toolings that are all part of an automation toolkit. And the more curious you are, the more willing you are to adapt and use and blend those tools into your organization and get them to work to deliver new values, the better. And if you're not excited by that, then, then maybe just a, a more routine role may, may suit you better. And there is a job out there for everyone. But definitely be curious, be adaptable, be excited by what you can do. Go out and hunt and understand it and apply it and work this tooling and technology in multiple different ways to make so many different benefits to your organization. Excellent communication, interpersonal influencing skills. So we talked earlier on about how, how key it is to be able to write documentation, because trust me, when you've got process design documents, solution design documents, user manuals, test manuals, business cases to write, um, you know, a whole host of other things in between and then beyond and above and below and writing skills are key, but we spend our time talking to people every single day. Don't be an RPA developer that hides in the background. You know, if you are, that's okay. You know, you're, you, we value you tremendously and highly, 
but the RPA developers that can get out there and communicate with their colleagues and share, as I mentioned earlier on, talk to their managers, talk to their BAs, talk to the end user, talk to the business leadership team, understand the context in which they're working, clarify and seek answers to the questions that they have, sell RPA as a benefit to the business, communicate clearly what you're trying to do and how you're trying to achieve it. And if you can do that verbally as well as written skills, then you have a set of unique attributes there that would be valuable not only in RPA, but in any other development environment or any other IT part of an organization. So focus on developing those interpersonal skills because people deal with people every single day. And in this day and age, we're dealing more remotely. We're dealing cross-border. We're dealing on Zoom, Hangouts, Teams, or every other variety of connection methodology that you can imagine. So work on those skills. We, people like people who can communicate clearly and articulately with them. Copywriting skills. So this is the again, it goes back to that ability to communicate and documentation. If you notice, you have seen some in time, some very long winded sentences, some very long stories that don't actually turn out meaning anything. People don't have time in organizations these days to read large manuals. In RPA, it's an agile technology. You need to just do enough documentation to make sure that uh, you understand the process, your colleagues can follow along if you're working out for the day or you get hit by that lottery bus, that your SME or your business user or your CFO can understand what you're doing. But write in short sentences, be very, very clear and articulate and specific about what it is you're trying to say. And if you can do that, then in email document format, text format, Teams, Hangout or whatever else, messaging format, then you will find that you will be able to uh, get things done so much faster than someone who is very long-winded or takes a, a large amount of time and documentation or verbally to actually get to the point. Alrighty, so that was agile, curious, communication and documentation skills. So we're halfway there, folks. So let's see what the next, next set of skills are for an exceptional developer. So coding, logical, reasoning skills, number 11 here. This could have equally been number one, but again, remember we're going back to it is the business outcomes that you deliver from your excellent skills that make a difference. RPA is a, is a very logical language. It's a sequence of flows. Not everybody in my mind can become an RPA developer because not everybody has the skills to have that logical mindset. I will never be a musician. I just do not have the skills. That does not mean that I can't listen to great music. And just like in RPA land or in automation land, if you can't code, there are so many other varieties of jobs that you can get involved in. So many jobs that have been created over the years, process analysts, data scientists, coders, COE leads, PR and communications inside of teams, documenters. There's a host of different skills and roles inside of automation that you can get involved in. But to be an RPA developer, you need to be very logical, very deliberate about what you're doing, have good reasoning and coding skills to allow you to actually perform the task. Number 12, empathy. So this is very much about, you need to understand why you're doing what you're doing. And remember, you're designing a solution for a customer. That might be an internal customer. That might be an external customer. Coming up with the best code possible, the most complicated code that impresses your colleagues will not impress a colleague and will certainly not impress a customer if they're interacting with a system that is complicated, difficult to understand. They won't appreciate the fact that you have been fantastic coder underneath the surface of this. So always have empathy with who you're designing the automation for. If you're making your colleagues life that little bit easier, then go and talk to them, see what they do. Maybe use design thinking as a methodology to understand why they do what they do, how they're feeling about doing what they're doing, how automation might make them feel better, how it might make them work better, how it might make them get home that little bit earlier, how it might allow them to spend that little bit more time with a customer. But remember customer experience here and be very empathetic to that, be it an internal colleague you're delivering an automation for or an external customer or somewhere in between the two. Always concentrate on why you're doing it and how the users will interact with the code that you produce. Excel and VBA. I don't think we're ever going to get away from Excel. It is one of those tools that absolutely exist in every finance department, if not every department under this earth. And whilst you can code very well in RPA and do calculations and all sorts of good stuff like that, people are still weighted to Excel. If you can extend the, the functionality of Excel by using Visual Basic for application, the coding language that's contained within that, then you can get Excel and our calculations performed within Excel, calling it from RPA code or automation code, 
get it to do magic things, spit out a very well formatted Excel sheet that's got tabulated, formatted, and you name it, everything else that you want to do in a very fast and ordered and logical manner, build complex code within RPA. I would recommend having both. Use Excel, use VBA, it's used everywhere. Combine it with RPA or other automation tools and you will be amazed at the amount of things that you can automate and digitize within your organization and pretty much any department inside of that organization as well. High attention to detail. Well, coding requires concentration, writing good documentation, performing good testing routines, all these things require a high attention to detail. You can't make mistakes. You may, but please learn from them, but you shouldn't make mistakes. It's a very atomic level, logical, flow by flow, step by step design. And therefore, the more diligent you are in delivering your designs, the better. The code will work sooner. There'll be less testing. There'll be less maintenance, the end of it, because the application won't fall over. And that is one of these things that is often forgotten, that the cost of your automation or the building of your automation is not necessarily at the front end. That costs money, it takes time to take people out of the business and build automation. It takes time to learn the skills. But a big hidden cost is often the run the business cost of automation programs. Therefore, the better code that you can write, the thing that covers the most exceptions, the code that doesn't fall over, because you've spent a great deal of time thinking about it and getting it right the first time around, will save you and your program and your company a great deal of money, a great deal of time, and a great deal of fixing over the longer term. And the better you get things right the first time, the more exciting things that you can do from day one, day two, day three, instead of working back through yourself or someone else's code that just wasn't quite at the races because they didn't spend just enough time getting that right the first time around. Can do positive attitude here. Well, we're in a space here where things don't always go right. That, that's a, a truism. Where things here, when things should be in a particular way, they're, they're absolutely not. And therefore, do you want to sit beside someone who is, you know, quite negative, who believes, my goodness, this won't work? Or do you want to sit beside someone who believes the world is, is their oyster, that everything is possible, and that if they just go about it a different way, then they'll, they'll find a different way to do it. And if you go in with that attitude in automation or digitization, uh, as you're automating or digitizing, digitizing processes or going about your work, you'll quickly find that you will get more things done. As someone once told to me, if you think you can't do it, you're probably right. And if you think you can do it, you're probably right as well. I prefer the latter, which is let's, let's make it all happen. Let's work out a way to get these things done. There's enough tooling and types of tooling and methods and folks out there or methods that you can reach out to or people you can reach out to that probably have come across the problem before. So give it a go and let's see how you get on and then be accountable for those results. Don't decide you can't do it, decide you can do it. Work out a way of delivering, go about delivering it um, and, and make it happen. You can't train attitudes, so come with the right attitude. But in this slide here, let me summarize. So, so come along, logical skills, have empathy with your customer, have a high attention to detail around the work that you're actually doing. Use Excel and VBA, you're not getting away from it. it it's here to stay. Extend the functionality of, of that tooling and your RPA work to allow you to make you uh, successful, get things done and, and make sure you get things done the first time around. So folks, that's 11 to 15, so we're down to our last five. So let's see what the last five are. But again, go back to the top. Always remember, concentrate on those business outcomes because those are the things that, that are truly, truly uh, make the difference. So when I talking, uh, talk these days about automation, I'm talking about an automation toolkit. When we're talking about RPA, we're talking about RPA platforms. And those platforms come with a variety of tooling. None, and sometimes uh, none more important than machine learning and artificial intelligence. So once you've gone through your logical, sequential, short cycle processes, the mundane routine, repetitive things inside of an organization, and there's a lot of them and there's a lot of organizations that have those, you find that you can run out of uh, RPA runway. And therefore, just like in organizations, you have people who do the clickety click, in other words, they press the keystrokes, they follow the logical orders. You find a lot of people have the thinkity think. In other words, they spend a lot of time thinking and rationalizing and understanding and decision making. Machine learning and artificial intelligence on top of RPA will allow you to create great analytical solutions. It'll allow you to implement chatbots using natural language processing. It'll allow you to extend your, your automation to decision-making uh, capabilities. It'll allow you to, for example, take in documentation using optical character recognition technology, scan that, digitize it, 
use the data to display the data, discover new value from the data. You know, there's a whole host of things that you can do that really move you up the value chain if you bring along extensive data analytical skills as well. Remember folks, I, I didn't want average, I wanted exceptional here. So we're, we're calling out all the exceptional attributes that you might have. Doesn't mean if you don't have all these, you can't be a developer. This is just the, the exceptional unicorns that I want to see inside of an organization. They're usually the folks who can add the most value and these are the folks that I would want to work with. Patience, empathy and laser focus on customer. Absolutely, as we mentioned earlier on, not everything will go well. It does take time to wait to, for uh, subject matter experts to come back. It may take time for your IT kit to get set up. It may take time to, to test, uh, but have a little bit of patience. All these things work out. You know, this is automation is a, is a long-term game. Uh, whilst you can do things really quickly and really rapidly and get stuff done pretty fast. Remember, tr digital transformation can take years not weeks um, and therefore you know start with having a little bit of patience and then the empathy and the laser focus throughout on your customer and on those business outcomes your customers are the folks who are going to pay the organization the money so make sure you're designing the automations with them in mind and the end goal in mind as well experience with multiple rpa platforms key as well here you know i go back to the analogy i used earlier on i learned to drive in more than one car once you've used more than one tool, and remember, one tool may not actually do everything that you want. Each of the toolings and the platforms certainly have strengths and functionalities, and very often that are unique of their own, and very often these functionalities are starting to come together. But not all tools will work within your application environment either. So take a little bit of time, go out and investigate the tools, and where you need more than one tool, definitely invest in it. It'll allow you to extend the scope of what you're doing and extend your automation delivery and the benefits you can get from automation quite extensively. API or application program interface experience. Sometimes you do not want to touch the surface and that is where application interfaces or APIs or I call them digital butlers or waiters or waitresses, they take data, they move it, they do all this behind the scene. So you can attach an API and RPA together really, really well and then you can make sure that your application or your, your code isn't uh, flaky and liable to fall over. So do look for your, for your programs out there. Check from your vendor manufacturers, are there APIs available? Because not only can it avoid uh, a Surface application from falling over if the Surface architecture changes quite a bit, but it can actually be quite robust and allow you to save a great deal of time in coding in RPA if you use an existing out of the box piece of code that's already freely available and well documented and understood. And finally, and we've reached number 20 here, folks, uh, project management skills. They won't guarantee you, you know, absolute success, but the more organized, the more diligent, the more uh, of you who concentrate on understanding that a project takes time, that it needs to be organized. There's a certain sequence of events around how you get a project done and delivered the better. So if you can develop some element of project management skills to organize your own work and potentially when you move up the organization to be a technical lead, a team lead, a program manager or, or eventually the, the head of COE or again the, the CIO when an organization is using automation tooling and technology, if you can go about ordering that work, putting a bit of manners around it, getting everybody in the right place at the right time and everybody delivered on schedule, on track, on budget and delivering those outcomes. That's an incredible skill to finish off on. So there we go, folks. As I said, that's, that's quite a lot of, of attributes that I like to see, but I go back to my point earlier on, who wants to go to an average movie with average popcorn to watch average actors while you eat average popcorn? You don't want to do that. And therefore I do not want an average programmer or developer in my team. I want exceptional individuals and then I want to set them free. That's what I aim for. That's what I develop in my teams because exceptional individuals can deliver exceptional results. And I hope you are, are, have more than one of these attributes. And if anybody has got 20 of these attributes, then you are a fantastic individual who are delivering for your organization. And I celebrate everything that you do and couldn't praise you highly enough. Next slide, please. Now, one thing I do want to deliver, and this is the message here, you know, there's a lot of conversation about RPA replacing jobs. There's a lot of conversation and excitement around automation, digitization, and what you can do with tooling and technology. And I absolutely am an advocate of, of augmenting individuals and augmenting firms and their capabilities by using automation and digital tooling. But the one thing I would say, and I'm being very deliberate about this, is it's not about the robots when you're dealing with 
uh, automation and tooling technology. It's about the people. It's about the customers who you're delivering for. It's about the colleagues who you're delivering for. And it's about the colleagues that you're interacting with. RPA and automation and digitization is a fantastic skill set to have. It's fantastic that Udacity and companies are providing these skills or offering them the opportunity to learn. I recommend you take every opportunity to spend time learning and growing a skill set that is ever increasing in this day and age. The one thing that we can be assured about, and COVID has been one of the prompters of this, the world has moved toward digital at a pace that probably was unforeseen. Things that may have taken years to happen in the past are now happening in weeks. And therefore, I recommend you bring these skills to your organization to allow it to cope, to allow it to survive and to allow it to thrive. So if you do anything in your career and you have those 20 skills, please, please, please remember that this is about people always, not about the machinery, not about the robots, but it's about dealing with people and delivering solutions that people love and will cherish and will add value and will deliver those business outcomes that I spoke about earlier on. So always, always, always focus on the people and the empathy to do that. Folks, that's all I've got today. That was reasonably quick, but I hope you've learned a lot. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to Alper, the Chief Product Officer for Udacity. I wish you a good evening, a good morning or a good afternoon. And thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to spend a little bit of time describing what I think is an exceptional RPA developer. Good luck in your career. Thank you. That was a great presentation. My name is Alper Tekin. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Udacity. And on behalf of the Udacity team and UiPath, I would like to thank all of the attendees for coming to the RPA Insiders virtual conference. I would also like to thank our incredible lineup of keynote speakers and panelists for taking time out of their busy schedules to be part of this event. The conference was full of extraordinary insights from our top leaders. And I hope that every attendee leaves this event with a better understanding of RPA, its use cases, and how each of you can be part of this technology that's revolutionizing the business world. Please don't forget that we're giving 50 attendees free access to our new RPA developer program open for enrollment today. After the conference has concluded, please check your email to see if you're a lucky recipient of this new program. The RPA developer nanodegree program created in partnership with UiPath will give learners solid professional level skills focused on developing and deploying software robots. Once again, thank you to the attendees, the speakers, and UiPath, and please visit udacity.com to learn more about the new RPA developer nanodegree program. Take care.